Get down. Get down. Stay down. After fighting with friends, even earlier hurting himself, Sam Yasko was suicidal. Do you have a handcuff I can put on? Please, please put him handcuff him. Ma'am, ma please, please cuff him. His brother and another friend had tried to restrain him, even bound his legs, then called police. Ma'am, just cooperate, bro. Ma'am, you need help, bro. Vacaville officers responded to this gas station, going hands-on to try and cuff Yasko. Body camera video shows one officer has his knee between Yasko's shoulders. Another steps on his back, then his arm. At one point, at least three cops have their weight on him. Yasko is unarmed, yet cuffed and on his stomach for several minutes. Hey, keep talking to me, bud. Soon, his heart stops beating. Is he breathing? I'm trying, trying to figure that out. No. Police start CPR, then paramedics try to revive him and rush him to the hospital. I thought for sure that they were going to save him. But he didn't make it. My life has come to a total... <laughs> His mother, Carmel Garcia, is now suing the city of Vacaville and the police department, claiming excessive force caused her son's death. I feel that they were totally ineffective and did not have the wherewithal or the training in order to handle someone who was despondent or in a mental health crisis. Updated department policy says officers get comprehensive education and training to effectively interact with those in crisis. They were doing everything they could to provide this guy aid. They weren't concerned about fixing the mental health problem until they fixed the physical problem. Vacaville's interim police chief says Yasko was on drugs and seen as a threat and says officers acted appropriately. Hey, hey let's grab another set. I would not change what they did. They. Um, use the tactics and training that they were given to secure him so that they could get the fire department in to help. You don't let the fire department, you don't let a doctor work on somebody who's violent and attacking. That training, attorney Julia Sherwin says, can vary across the country. She's a legal expert in positional asphyxia cases and was even consulted by prosecutors in the George Floyd case. And it's been well known in law enforcement for 30 years that if officers are uh, restraining a person, face down on the ground, the minute they have them, the second they have them handcuffed, they need to roll them over onto their side or uh, get them up uh, to sit up because of the risk of asphyxiation. She says that risk is increased for someone who's obese or under the influence. Civil rights attorneys argue putting Yasko in a prone position led to his death. These officers should have known better. The city should have known better. So to say that he was pinned to the ground by the weight of officers, other than the initial handcuffing is not true. That's not what happened. The coroner concluded Yasko's death was caused by cardiac arrest after a confrontation with law enforcement. He also had meth in his system. All you have to do is look at the video. The video really tells the story in this case. Attorneys say the city lacks rules to prevent positional asphyxia risk. They need to be held accountable. They need to be held accountable for their actions. Garcia also wants change to how incidents involving mental health are handled. Create a unit that can respond to these types of calls. While a countywide crisis response team is in the works, there's no way of knowing if that would have saved Yasko's life. Taking those deep breaths and like, oh. We're working on him, We're working man. On him. He's in good him. hands. He's in the best hands possible. The police chief did say he'll soon work with an outside consultant to review the department's internal culture, training, policies, and procedures. I'm Brooks DeRose, KTVU Fox 2 News.